So uh, today we're going to do a Doppler radar demonstration. So the first question you might ask is, what is Doppler? Well, my suggestion uh, is to simply go to Wikipedia and read up on the definition of Doppler. There's a very good article there. What I want to focus on today is how to measure Doppler with a simple uh, coherent CW radar system. Um, the radar system we will be working with today is the uh, coffee can radar system developed for uh, MIT uh, short radar courses. This uh, radar system is a good uh, case study of pretty much most Doppler uh, CW radar sets. So let's talk about Doppler with respect to the uh, coffee can radar system and by extension with respect to pretty much any and all radar systems. So first we'll draw the, the uh, block diagram of the coffee can radar. So what we have here is we have an oscillator and um, we have some attenuation amplification. We split the oscillator into two. Half of it is transmitted out of the first cantenna. This would be the transmit TX. The other half is fed down to a frequency mixer, which performs a multiplication function. Now, um, the transmitter, as we've seen from an earlier demo, uh, emits a, a microwave uh, spherical wavefront, okay? And we actually were able to see it in an earlier demo uh, using the green and red LEDs. So, if you could imagine, we have this um, wavefront propagating out of the transmitter. It hits a target downrange here. And some of this wavefront intersects with the cross-section of the target and is scattered back towards the emitter. Now, for the coffee can radar, we have a separate transmitter and receiver. Uh, we do this because the radar transmits continuously and receives continuously. So to reduce the coupling between the transmitter and receiver so that the transmitter does not um, deafen the receiver, we have separate transmitter and receivers. In a conventional radar system, you'd have only one, but we have a separate transmitter and receiver simply because ours transmits and receives at the same time. So our receiver is co-located with the transmitter. It's right here. It's, for all intents and purposes, it's at the same spot. So we receive some of the scattered energy uh, from our target, okay? Then this is amplified and fed into our multiplier. Now, what our multiplier does is it multiplies um, what we're hearing in our receiver by what we're transmitting right now, and the difference comes out, and it's amplified with uh, three op amps, okay? These two act as a low-pass filter, and this one's just an amplifier. And this is fed to your uh, laptop AD for. And also on the coffee can radar, this oscillator is called a voltage control oscillator. It's normally modulated with a ramp. But in this case, we're just uh, bringing up to plus uh, two and a half volts. So we're, we're, we're going to run this in CW mode, not modulated. So what happens here is we transmit a CW uh, uh, microwave at 2.4 gigahertz. The wavefront goes out and propagates towards the target. And some of it crosses the target. And whatever is incident on the target reflects its own wavefront, which is picked up by the receiver. So the receiver multiplies what it's receiving by what we're transmitting, okay? And therefore, the radar is a coherent system, the product of which is amplified and fed to our laptop A to D converter. So um, if the target is stationary, let's, let's, let's take a look at what we would be receiving if the target were stationary or fixed. Um, I think the best way to do that is to imagine that we draw a straight line between the radar and the target. Now, 
if we were to take this straight line and plot the uh, real amplitude of the, uh, of the uh, radiated microwave, um, we would see something like this, okay? So let's bring this over here. Let's plot this. So if this were range amplitude, what you'd see is you'd see our carrier wave, and of course it would be getting smaller and smaller as it gets further away. Okay? And let's say, I'm going to make this plot a little longer. Let's assume our, um, our target is right here, at this location. Then what happens is, this instant wave uh, hits the target and is scattered back. Okay. So red would be the instant, blue would be the scatter. Now, at the origin here, let's assume that this is our uh, uh, radar, which it is, right? So our radar emits the red wave goes downrange, as we have seen in the uh, earlier demo where we actually plotted the uh, real uh, electric field in space, and then it scatters off the target and comes back downrange. What the mixer does is, this is right here and that's there, so the mixer takes this point and it multiplies the incident by the reflected at that particular phase at this exact location spatially speaking. And when you multiply two cosines of the same frequency, the product is the phase difference, okay? And so the product here, after this cosine multiplication, and this cosine multiplication, is just going to be the phase difference, okay? So this is omega t plus b, and this is going to be omega t plus uh, phi plus theta delay. Okay, so theta delay is the phase delay from here all the way back around to there. All we're going to see here is the uh, cosine of theta delay. Okay, that's it. That's what's on the output. So, what's that look like for a static target? Well, it's a DC value. Multiply this by this, and what we're seeing on uh, the output of our mixer here is a DC value, which is proportional to uh, the uh, return phase of a static target. And we're going to show that right now with the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is connected directly to the mixer output, so you can see the change in phase. Um, you can see the actual phase of a static target. In this case, the static target will be my hand. Um, if you watch the oscilloscope screen, right now it's DC coupled. The origin is right here in the middle. Uh, so right now, it looks like we're 50 millivolts below DC. And that's because this radar here is uh, emitting a plane wave and it's bouncing off some of the lab equipment behind the camera, which there's a lot of lab equipment, big metal stuff back there. Let's make my hand the, uh, the, the primary, the largest, the brightest scatter in the target scene. So if I put my hand right here, okay, if you look at the phase, it's moving slightly with my hand. The target, so, so what's happening is we're emitting a, a, um, a CW wave, it's scattering off my hand, it's going back to the receiver, it's multiplying, the re we're multiplying the receive by the transit. So right now, the range to target is proportional to voltage and wavelength. So let's put my hand right here. We can see we're minus 50 millivolts. Let's move my hand back. Looks like we're minus 150 millivolts. Let's move it back a little further. Looks like we're minus 100 millivolts, minus 50, almost at zero, so on and so forth. So as you can see, the voltage changes on the oscilloscope screen as my hand moves. Oh, now we're at plus 50 millivolts. 
So as you see, as my hand is moving, the voltage on the screen changes with respect to uh, the, the position of my hand and the frequency at which we're transmitting, okay? Doppler is just a matter of this target moving, okay? So <laughs> we know that we're going to get a DC voltage if the target is right here, right? But what if the target, so if the target's here, we get this DC voltage. If the target's here, we get this DC voltage. If the target's here, we get this DC voltage. If the target's here, we get this voltage. So let's put a velocity component on it. So imagine the target is moving with respect to time. Well, what do you see? You see a Doppler. And that is Doppler for you. So what we're going to do is, um, using this radar, we're going to perform some Doppler. <laughs> There's one. And another one. There's an outgoing. So we're going to process some of the data we just recorded outside. So first thing I'm going to do is run this uh, program readdata.doppler.m, which you can find on the MIT Open Courseware site. So if we do that. Here's the Doppler spectrum of the passing cars we just taped. And uh, if we zoom in, you can see that uh, they're going at different velocities. One was going uh, maybe, you know, 15 meters per second. The other was uh, 18, and the other ones are, were pushing uh, 20 meters per second. So um, let's take a look at what this 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 is first. I mean, we have this awesome plot right here, which is the Doppler spectrum versus time. It's like a waterfall FFT plot. This allows you to show the, char the Doppler characteristics of any given target. Some targets are more complicated than cars. Um, you know, like an exercise bike has a more complicated spectrum, for example, than a car does. But let's step back for a minute and take a look at what the raw data looks like. So we'll create another figure, and in that we'll plot the raw data. So <clears throat> here's here's the raw data. So there are three, actually, looks like um, four vehicles passed by during that time. So let's take a look at some of them. So if we look at the first one, and we zoom in, And we'll just zoom really <clears throat> close. So what you see here is actually the sine wave. It's just like when I was moving my hand in front of the radar. That is the, um, the Doppler of the car moving. And we take the Fourier transform of this, and uh, we get one line from this plot over here. Okay, and then as this moves forward in time, and we continue to take the Fourier transform, we get multiple uh, lines of spectrum. Now let's see what this sounds like. We uh, have shown today what Doppler is and what how Doppler radar works using a very good case study, which is the MIT coffee can radar. We went ahead and measured the Doppler spectrum of moving vehicles down the road and uh, we plotted the spectrum. We also listened to it and we viewed that spectrum. So hopefully other people will go out there and try these experiments themselves and uh, learn something about applied electromagnetics.